This is going to be a memory thing, so bear with me for the tangents. I don't have any particular nostalgia for SpongeBob SquarePants over any of the other cartoons that I watched as a kid. You didn't even have cable or anything, so we did have basic public television, so my nostalgia is all centered in Animaniacs and PBS Kids, but that doesn't mean SpongeBob wasn't a part of my childhood. Growing up, going to public school, I was peripherally aware of SpongeBob SquarePants on the playground and stuff. <laughs> Danny Norton did the uh, the best part about sharing a secret is secretly adding to the other person's secret collection of secrets. Secretly, a uh, thing with me. He never actually did tell me any of his secrets, and he said I'm slightly naive, and I didn't know what naive meant. And then it might have been fourth grade. And then I'm gonna say fourth grade. We did this writing assignment where apparently we didn't need to be all that original. Charlie Gomez wrote a uh, uh, James Bond 007 fanfic, and I think it was might, might have been Tanner Davis. Tanner Davis. He just rewrote the SpongeBob episode Life of Crime as a story. <laughs> might have been that. Also, might have been a fanfic for all I knew. I, didn't know it was based off an episode or anything. <laughs> Free Balloon Day is apparently canonically December 27th. That gives us something to celebrate after Christmas, so that ties back into the story that's going on with it. Uh, it was late November or early December 2002. I was in fifth grade at the time. We were together as a family. My sister had made something in her Easy Bake Oven or something. Uh, she was passing out snacks. And I complained that my stomach hurt. <laughs> Apparently I appeared in a lot more pain than I thought because for some reason everybody freaked out over this and then we uh, went to the emergency room and they did tests on me and it turned out I had appendicitis. My appendix was swollen and so uh, I was hospitalized. I'm not sure how you diagnose such a malady. They had this this lemonade stuff, which was the nastiest stuff, but I had to fast for like eight hours before drinking it the first time. It's got like iron particles in it, and it soaks into your guts, and it makes your guts appear sharper on the CAT scan or whatever. But um, I was crazy thirsty, crazy hungry. I, I remember I was just complaining, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, over and over again. And so when I finally could drink that lemonade stuff, uh, you know, I, I downed it all right there. Uh, then later, when I wasn't so thirsty and I didn't have to fast for it, uh, when we had to do scans again, turns out it was the nastiest stuff. It, Ah, it was a real chore to get through. It almost put me off of, well, it, it put me off of lemonade for years. Uh, not quite as long as, as the incident with the honey bunches of oats put me off of honey bunches. Anyway, the setup is I had to spend Christmas at the hospital. For a bit there, it looked like I was going to be able to stay home for Christmas, but then my stomach straight up exploded inside of me. And so I, I did have to spend Christmas at the hospital, after all. But that was fine, because they had cable there. Uh, Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network and the Disney Channel and Tech TV, back when that was still a thing. Tech TV, that was the greatest. I loved that. So this is where I saw my first episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. My first episode of Spongebob Squarepants was thus the Christmas special, Christmas Who? Uh, it was produced by these fine people and premiered December 6th, 2000, which means that as of the day that I'm recording this right now, uh, that episode would be old enough to vote, my goodness. 
I knew it back when it was only two years old, you know, it was still a baby back before it had the 2012 kid sister, or our kid younger sibling hermaphrodite who also reproduces asexually through budding. Later watching Spongebob normally when we had satellite television, I wondered where the donkey was. It was never the normal rotation, obviously, so for the longest time I thought I might have been making things up. Maybe it was a bad episode or something. But I must have seen at least uh, part of that episode again between then and now for me to realize that that must have been the Christmas special, and the Christmas special must have been my first episode of Spongebob. <laughs> this episode had the first appearance of Patchy and Potty, and it struck me as rather presumptuous that Spongebob had his own fan club when I hadn't even seen any episodes up till this point. Patchy is played by Tom Kenny, uh, Potty is voiced in this episode <laughs> by Steven Hillenberg himself. And so I was introduced to Spongebob and Patrick and Squidward and Sandy and Mr. Krabs. Those, those playground Spongebob references, it always felt like it was a joke that I wasn't in on until I saw the show and everything clicked and I got it. I can't remember what other shows I saw the Christmas specials of, what other shows were even on at the time. But I do remember Spongebob. That felt special. <laughs> so yeah, Christmas at a hospital. Uh, let's see. I remember that that was where I got the moose, the moose doll, and uh, there was a mini tree for me in my hotel room. Got to take that. This is one of the trees that we still have now. I think we've got a lot of trees. Uh, Gunnar Young gave me a bionicle. I remember that. And there was this this cart. I would read later in Boys Life magazine that it was actually somebody's Eagle Scout project to supply these to hospitals. It had, it had little gifts and toys in it, and so from that I got this little mini Lego set. Uh, Harry Potter, where Harry chases Draco for Neville's Remember All. And later, maybe it was the same year? Maybe it might have been the next year. There's this Danish tradition that uh, you hide a pickle in the tree. Whoever finds it on Christmas morning gets to do something special. Nowadays, we do it that the pickle finder gets to open the first gift, and then we take turns opening gifts. But back then, it was the pickle finder gets a special gift. But it was, it was hard with four boys and one girl to find a gift that would match everyone, because you bought the gift beforehand, not knowing who would get the pickle. No. We just take turns opening gifts, and whoever finds the pickle gets to open the first gift. I found the pickle that year. The prize was the Lego set. It was the exact same Lego set that I already got from the cart. I opened it anyway, even though I already had that set, because I thought that it, maybe it was a... Uh, I figured it was a different Lego set, just hidden inside the box of a Lego set that I already had, and then masterfully resealed so that it looked like it had never been opened kind of thing. So then I had two Lego sets, two, I had two of those. Uh, Christmas ended and programming went back to normal. There was the Krusty Krab training video, I remember that. Uh, the end blew my mind because the, the joke actually incorporated the, the meta text of the end into the text itself for the episode. Uh, the finite format of the medium being used as, as a joke <laughs> still blows my mind. <laughs> they inserted a little tube into my belly to suck all the exploded appendix juice out of my guts. Uh, and when they then when they pull it out, there was a bunch of blood and pus that also came out. It's really awesome. Uh, I've got scars, but I'm kind of fat. And if I were thinner, I'd show them off more. I lost a lot of weight in the hospital. I didn't realize how fat I was until I lost all that weight, and then I just... I guess I gained that weight back. I'm a lot more muscular, at least now. Than, well, anyway, anyway. Uh, this is the first Christmas since then. You know, Stephen Hillenburg alive to be in it.
The secret formula is... 